everyone. Thank you for joining another episode of Mold Talks. Today, I have a very special guest. Her name is Sarah. Sarah, go ahead and introduce yourself and let everyone know why you're here. Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Sarah Tate. I am here after quite a long journey um, battling mold toxicity, though I didn't know it was mold toxicity till about a year, maybe a year and a half ago. Um, and I'm in the process of healing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for being here and sharing your story and helping amplify this message that it's not such a rare occurrence, that it happens to many of us. Um, and it sucks, right? And we all know that. And and I think other people that don't realize that, you know, it's, it's helpful for them to kind of wrap their head around things because, um, you know, there's a lot of people out there that don't realize how big of an impact this really is. So let's right. talk about let's talk about where your journey started. Uh, I know you said about a year, year and a half ago is when you started to connect the dots. But what it, what was it like before that? Um, you, you know, how how did things start where you started not feeling well? Right. So um, I'd have to start with migraines. Um, I've always known I was migraine prone. So in my family, my mother struggles with migraines as well. Starting roughly in high school, but not being necessarily hospitalized for it, you know, back and forth, daily <laughs> trips at college, um, just unable to stop the pain with my prescribed abortives at that time. Um, it wasn't until I left college and started teaching in Chicago a couple years later that things began to really uh, spiral. Um, migraines that would come hand in hand with severe panic, um, brain fog, fatigue. I had a very long commute without a car. It was very hard to get to work walking, um, getting on a train, I'm sure passing multiple environmental factors that I didn't realize at the time and uh, just getting more and more migraines that uh, eventually one hospital visit of the many uh, sent me to a national clinic where I spent about two weeks trying to figure out why the migraine um, and their main job and course of action was just to abort the migraine there you know a treatment facility to abort and provide pain relief. And I did eventually get there, you know, in terms of being able to suppress pain, but I left there not knowing why I ever had the pain, um, the root of the problem. And eventually after they released me, um, they basically released me with two things. One, a prescription of Benadryl intramuscular injections. It was the only thing that could relieve the head pain, which we weren't quite able to figure why until, of course, much later. But at that point, you know, an answer was an answer. I had gotten some relief. I was prescribed a medicine that was, to my knowledge, working and aborting pain. Um, I was put on an antidepressant. This was also a period in life where I was significantly underweight and didn't know why. Um, I would say my healthy weight is 115, 120. I've always been a, on the smaller side. But I left and flew back to my home here in Louisiana a little over 80 pounds. Um, wow. That would have been just a few weeks before the mandatory lockdown for COVID. Um, so a lot of people didn't see what that was. And in, in you know, a weird way, I was thankful because it was the only thing noticeable about what was going on is this very dramatic weight loss um, that wasn't my fault <laughs> or my yeah. intention. You know, none of, none of um, this is your fault and, and none of this is your intention, of course, you know, and so absolutely. I want to take a, a minute to just acknowledge you, you know, and what you went through. And obviously it's uh, a struggle trying to make sure that people don't go through this. And I think we have a lot to learn, you know, right now as a society on, on what's happening. And 
Um, I, I'd like to tie in more of the, the medical stuff that, that happened to you, because I think it's important for people to see. Um, you went to doctors and the doctors were basically, they didn't have any answers other than let's relieve the pain, right? At any point, did, did, you, did you ask any of the doctors, you know, as they're saying, well, we're going to treat you with this, this, and this. At any point, did you ask the doctors, well, what's causing this in the first place? Always. Um, I always tried to make that the base of the conversation, not only because I wanted to get to the root, but there were all these other symptoms that didn't seem to possibly be related. And yet I knew they were, you know, I knew this was a, I was shutting down in and, and so many ways, um, you know, and most of my questions were given to neurologists in the neurology field, pain specialists. Um, and there wasn't ever a definitive answer as to why they gave me what they did other than it's just another chance. Uh, whether it was in a board of medicine or one I took every day for, you know, to build up and serve as a preventative. I've done rounds and years of the Botox injections, you know, which only exasperated the pain. Yeah. It was always just a Band-Aid covering and, it up. And, and kind of looking at all of that, you know, uh, you mentioned earlier antidepressants. And, um, you know, I want to highlight the fact that it's hard not to be depressed when you're not feeling well chronically, right? Um, because yes. it's, you're not living the same quality of life that you once did. Right. And so it's hard not to reflect on that and, you know, not, not be happy about it. Right. So, um, with, with respects to the antidepressants, what was the consensus there? Why did they think that, you know, antidepressants would be helpful in this scenario? Um, the, I believe they were linking it to the pain and I, I understand why, Sometimes I would begin with a migraine that would escalate into a full-blown panic attack, um, which I'm dealing with now. Um, and then reversed, a panic attack was very easy to trigger a migraine. It was just, you know, this hamster wheel they were trying to mm. tackle from different ends. Um, I did admit to some pretty... Um, hard things, um, tough thoughts, you know, I was as honest as I could be. And for a while, even just prescribed Xanax for the panic to not spread the pain. And of course, I've learned much further down the road that that caused a lot more trouble, you know. I want to, I want to let you know that it's okay to, you know, experience what you're experiencing. You know, it, it's not okay that it, that it's happened to you because this is all avoidable. And I think that we need to make some major changes in society to, to prevent this type of pain from occurring in the first place, but it is okay that you feel the way that you feel. Um, I'm sure that your journey has not been easy. I am sure that you have been, uh, you know, uh, unnecessarily gone down different ro difficult roads because of people's lack of acceptance of understanding of what it is to go through this in the first place. And I think that, you know, our objective here together today is to kind of show just how hard it is, how much pain we're put through as human beings going down this path and that it's not our fault. It's not your fault, you know? And so I want you to know that. And I want to, you know, take the moment to, to unpack that because I, I hope that mm -hmm. it's helpful to hear. And, and, um, you know, I, I don't know if you've had some difficulty with people believing you, but just know that I believe you and that there are way too many people going through similar challenges for this not to be real. Right. Uh, it, it means a lot to even just say that. So thank you. You're welcome. I, I wanted, I wanted, I wanted to take the time to acknowledge that because, uh, I know how difficult this can be, you know, and, and mm -hmm. so many people go through this. So, um, you know, I, I think it's important for us to take a step and, uh, and acknowledge that, um, going back to 
And I, and I, I do want to also say that I know this can be very difficult to re-experience and rehash. And, you know, I really, really appreciate you for, you know, subjecting yourself to this. And I, I, I it's not my intention to make you sad. You know, oh, it's no. my intention to bring this out and, and help educate people going through this. And uh, as well as the people that could make our lives easier when we are going through this by just understanding um, as you went through all these treatments and, you know, I, I'm sure they provided some relief. So that's always helpful, of course. Um, very frustrating that you didn't get any answers. How did you eventually find out that, you know, there was mold that was attributing to what you were going through? Yeah. So, um, after leaving the headache clinic, I moved back to Louisiana and I spent a couple months in what I would call like a false chapter of healing. It was a band-aid on the depressants. It was a band-aid on the pain, but I thought I was in an, enough. I thought I was ready to go take on the next job. Um, I agreed to a teaching position with the same grade level of eighth graders, but it's a, it was a different time uh, with COVID. And what kind of happened, uh, pretty dangerous domino effect during every class period, you know, to protect the kids, you're cleaning the rooms. Um, so I had three different classes rotating, cleaning in the morning, in between each, and then after. And this is when I started to develop brain fog. I still struggle to, you know, depict to this day what that feels like, kind of even losing what room I was in or what word I was going to say, um, lessons becoming blurry. It wasn't until, well, I should pause for a second. I, I in that time frame, ended up again in the hospital up to four times, just migraine pain where the Benadryl wasn't doing anything. Um, but right before that fourth and final hospital, appointment as a teacher I was having a lot of stuttering issues that came out of nowhere tremors I felt like my legs were on fire sometimes um one day my uh stutter just kind of developed even almost in my tongue just in, inflating and it, it did feel like an allergic reaction. I did go to the hospital, Benadryl did solve the issue there. Um, eventually my, you know, absolute army of a family trying to tackle the problem and figured it out on um, some doctors back in Chicago that were functional medicine. And they said, sounds like mold toxicity. I took a, you know, mold toxicity test and it came back with a, a lot of black mold, um, mostly affecting my brain. Um, and in this last year, I've been trying to detox, but I didn't realize that my body chemistry wasn't ready to detox. And I actually got much sicker trying to jump into that healing faster rather than understanding the order in which you have to heal in this process. You know, we uncovered some pretty severe deficient deficiencies in my hormones. Um, I'm told time and time again by many doctors, they've never seen this before, how deficient I am. Um, and it's all one big monster of the same thing. You know, um, so I'm in hormone therapy right now, um, trying to slowly detox again using binders, charcoal, and clay. Um, but we've recently realized I'm even not ready for that. We might look into um, infusion therapy. I don't know if I don't know much about it. I know it's the next possible step. You know, to go right into the cell. 24 seven care because I'm, I'm not able to detox without much pain. I'm really, it's I'm really sorry to hear that, you know, what you're going through and, and, you know, there are, I have heard this before where, you know, certain de detox pathways when they're blocked uh, makes right. it very, very difficult to, to detox, um, which, mm -hmm. you know, 
obviously adds to the frustration and pain that you're already experiencing to take a step back for a second and, and put you, um, more in the past when you first went to that medical clinic and they told you that they suspected mold toxicity and then, then they confirmed it. What was going through your mind at that point of time? Were, were, did you find any relief in finally knowing that you know what the problem is and can solve it? Or did it leave you, you know, more confused? Yeah, so many emotions at once, certainly. But initially, relief in the fact that I'd actually never heard of it before, yeah. rather than hearing something that a didn't sit right or B no I've I've thought of that and that can't be it because A B and C almost the unknown of it was like all right I'm ready to tackle something I don't know I feel like I've tried everything you know um, I I shared that joy with many people actually when I found out about the diagnosis I just didn't know what what how severe this really was. Um, and you can still be joyful in finding what is wrong, but it's it's a a much darker battle than I knew. Oh, I, I mean, I, I'm glad that you found some relief in the moment because you know, obviously, it's hard to you can't fix what you don't know. So it's worse right. definitely being in the dark, not on not knowing what it is. And I know that doesn't make things any easier now because obviously, there's some challenges that you're faced with. But I, I am glad that at least it brought you some sort of relief at the, in that exact moment. Going back to now, I mean, I'm not a doctor. I can't provide any medical advice, but, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm just curious. Have you tried, you know, some other detox method, uh, sorry, methodologies like the sauna, for example, trying to sweat? Well, yes. And this is where <laughs> I pull advice from don't go too fast. Mm -hmm. Because, again, I started to actually feel better at first when I knew what was wrong. I had stepped away from the environment with the chemicals. And I tried to even just have a, I had a personal trainer. And I thought if I could just even once a week, because I could feel myself getting so, you know, fatigued. I know sweat is a uh, form to release toxins. Um, and so I thought I could do that by working out. And that certainly wasn't the answer for me. It was just too much. And I tried it once a week. Um, as far as saunas go, I've been, I have been hesitant on my end, not knowing what is in the sauna or mm. if there's mold in that sauna. I'm um, pretty hesitant for where I go still right now and what I what could be in front of me um but I am currently doing the Epsom salt and uh, magnesium baths you know and that seems to be enough um or not too much for me to be able to handle um other than that I've found some positives and vitality drops um you know, one drop a day, not 12, like I'd started with, you know, I've just wanted to speed everything up to get my life back. And anytime I try to jump too far forward, you know, I've been yeah. Back. Yeah. yeah, you know, I, I'll, I'll do a, a bit of an experience share because um, I think it's, it, it could be helpful and give you some ideas without directly making any recommendations or suggestions. Um, in, in my experience, and I'm still, I'm still on my own healing journey. Um, you know, I had, uh, the opposite effect. I had significant weight gain. Um, and I attribute it to just the amount of years of exposure that I've been in inside, you know, uh, water damaged buildings and homes and things like that. But, mm -hmm. um, progressively things got worse probably over the last like five years or so. And it, it just took, I think for me, it took a turn, um, just over long periods of time. Um, and so as of recently, I, I started this uh, detox program, which I finished, um, definitely feel a lot better, but I'm still not kind of where I want to be. But um, I was doing the sauna a lot. And I was, okay. I was doing it on a gradient, meaning, you know, like 
starting with 15 minutes and 20 minutes and a half hour, et cetera, giving my body time to acclimate. And so I wasn't just like jumping in all at once. Um, and in that experience, what was interesting about it is at first I wasn't really sweating. Like I had to, I had to take salt and potassium to kind of balance out, you know, the, my, my body's, I guess, um, electrolytes. And, um, with that being said, after about seven days, I was sweating like a faucet. And the reason I share that with you is because, um, sometimes you you can't jump in all the way. You can't just like jump right into the deep end of the pool. You got to kind of walk down each step and little Mm -hmm. by little get there. And for me, what I noticed is after those seven days and I started sweating, I would say more normal, like the profuse sweating that you should get when you're sitting in 140 degrees, um, I started to notice that I started feeling better each day thereafter. Um, And I, and there was a lot of ups and downs because you're, you know, you're sweating, you're releasing toxins, but you're also recirculating those toxins to, to sweat them out in the first place. Um, I find that, I find that, um, some days were better than others, but over the course of time, and especially when I did it on a gradient scale like that, at the very end, which it, I did it for about three weeks, about 21 days, um, I didn't even recognize myself and just the way I felt. And, and this was like mental clarity, um, physically, um, you know, uh, fatigue is a big thing that I was struggling with. Uh, brain fog definitely happened here and there. Um, but it, 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 just by taking things on a gradient and like kind of progressing up. So I don't know if you're, if you're supposed to take 12 drops of that supplement, starting off with one and then two and, you know, like don't not pushing yourself too hard. Um, I think for, for me was like such a value um, and and gave me the results that I was looking for. And I'm still, you know, trying to, to get back to what I once was, which was, Mm -hmm like this un- invincible force that I felt, you know, where is now I feel, um, where I, I, you know, I, I'm not so, so invincible as I once felt that I was. And, um, I guess, I guess I'm okay with that. Right. Knowing that there's a, a journey that I'm going through and enjoying the journey and being more in touch with my body and listening and paying attention um, it's, it's provided some comfort, um, I think mentally for me in the healing mm-hmm. process. I, uh, have been this person who's always been impatient and wanted to just always be at the finish line. It's like, I just envisioned myself there, but, um, that, that for me has caused more mental anguish than, um, just saying, you know what, let's enjoy each day and enjoy the journey. And when you, over a span of time, when you look back and reflect, like, I know you're not where you want to be today. But if you look back and reflect of where you are today versus your worst, you know, worst time you've ever felt, it's, it's probably night and day. And those are the wins you want to look at and be like, yes, now I want to look back a year from now and say, remember where I am today um, and reflect on that. It, it, it's what kept me going, you know? Um, So if anything, I hope, I hope some of that experience share provided some value. um, No, absolutely. Again, I can certainly relate (laughs) with the mindset. You just want to get there, but we're getting there. Getting there, you know, and enjoying the journey. um, Even, even, even when it's hard, just, just take the time to enjoy the journey because here's how I look at it now is if we didn't suffer at, at some point in our life, how would we really ever know what happiness is like? Yeah. You know, because yeah. I think, I think when I look back in periods of time where I felt happy I, at that exact moment, I don't think I realized I was happy, you know? And yeah. when I look at times where I'm struggling and I reflect on those times versus times where, where I'm struggling less or not struggling, like, oh yeah, that's what happiness is like. I was just overcoming these obstacles and getting to where I wanted to go, wherever that, that time period was. And these time periods, they're like loops, right? There are these periods of time where you have specific goals. Right now, I know my goal is healing and helping others heal. And I know yours is probably very similar. Yes. And you're going to accomplish that goal. And I when sure you, hope so. <laughs> you are. You are going to accomplish that goal. 
And I know it's, I know it's frustrating and there's setbacks, right? But you are going to accomplish that. And uh, when you do, you'll overcome these, this challenge that you're currently going through and you'll have a new goal and there'll be a new time period with a new goal in mind. So keep, keep that in mind, especially in, in days that are tough, you know, cause uh, it, it can be tough. Um, so I hope, hopefully, hopefully we, we uh, learned a little bit from each other just now. And um, I think so. And what, so, so, so tell me a little bit about um, what, what you're looking forward to in this healing journey and um, how do we, how can we provide some positivity to others who may be going through similar challenges? And I know that that's not always the easiest thing to answer when you're going through kind of hell and back, but um, I would love for you to, to shed some insight on some of the positive moments you've been through on this journey and uh, sharing some light with others. Sure. Um, I guess I'd have to start with, um, I'm able to acknowledge what this illness has taken from me that used to be the focus and at times it's still hard not to be what you know job loss moving cities uh all kinds of spirals but then you're almost put in a position to look at what it can't take away um it, it's made me value and appreciate the friendships and most particularly uh, the relationship to my parents um it's, it's it's crazy it's something i've not experienced until you're fighting for something like this together um i'm looking forward to who i am at the end of the journey but i'm i'm like you like you said i'm trying to enjoy who i am during it too. Um, I think there's even a little bit of fear of what am I without this? This has been years and years of figuring out and there's certainly um, some anxiety to what to what I'll be and what life looks like even without it, um, if that makes any sense at all. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, I, I don't know if, you know, teaching has always been the plan. I don't know if that's quite going to be the plan anymore, but all that means is there's something else that's meant to be the plan and that will convey itself, you know, one day at a time, what I'm Absolutely. really supposed to be doing. So I have no doubt in that. And, you know, it's, yeah. it's easy to normalize when you're dealing with chronic illness. It's easy to very much normalize that and get attached to, you know, this new normal. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, 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 in a way it's, it's a new normal right now, but it doesn't have to be forever and you'll have a new normal that you'll get accustomed to. And it's right. going to be, you know, one that is able to be symptom free, you know, and be able to go out there and enjoy things without feeling pain. Yeah. And, uh, that'll be a new normal and something to look forward to, you know, and as far Absolutely. as fear of the unknown of what, what the future holds, heck, I could tell you, um, People think I have it all figured out. Um, I don't. Every single day, I'm like, what, what else could I be doing to help? And, and, yeah. and I come up with new ideas. And it's exciting. And there's an exciting journey in that, too, of figuring yeah. out what that next chapter looks like. And um, you don't have to have it all figured out. And I've made peace with that, you know, not having it all figured out at all times. Um, it, it, certain, certain people, it can provide some anxiety, too, because some people are innate planners, right? They have to have everything planned out and everything has to go according to plan. Me, I've personally figured out that the best laid plans can have a wrench thrown in them. So I've, I've, I've become, I've become more of a goal setter than a planner, yeah. right? So I right. set these goals, I shoot for the moon and hope they'll land amongst the stars, right? As they say. Yeah. So, um, I think that, um, it'll come clear to you, you know, and, uh, I hope that you don't put so much pressure on yourself to figuring out and kind of, if you, if you, if you can manage, you may enjoy that process too, of just yeah. what's next. And, uh, a, a lot, a lot of this is, is kind of, you know, just figuring out what's next each step of the way and, and going for that and setting goals. And I think when we're healing, 
you know, setting goals of, you know, maybe I want to have less headaches this week. Right. And, and, you know, <laughs> counting how many headaches you have, maybe you had 10 different headaches throughout the week and your goal next, next week, week is to have nine headaches, you know, and you start there because going from 10 to zero is a frustrating experience, right? We have to kind of remember that there's wins along the way and having these wins makes us stronger, you know, cause we, it's, it's more resilient to reaching the end goal. And, um, I just, I, 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 I hope anyone listening that may be going through similar challenges can find some value in that and setting some smaller goals towards the larger one so that you get to experience these wins and feel good about it. Absolutely. Um, I'm sorry, you went away there for a second video wise, but I was hearing everything. So I Good. just got you back. We had, we had, we, you know, and unfortunately with technology, it only works when it works. And so we always have some glitches to deal with, but no, I'm glad you, you, you got a chance to hear everything. And um, I, I want to ask you, um, what would you recommend to someone going through similar challenges that, that you went through that, you know, having been through it, you now can objectively look at it and give some advice? Um, for me, if it's okay to still say something I'm struggling with, but no, it needs to be heard, yes. you know, especially if you are um, used to putting people in front of yourself um, you know, it, it's certainly hard to be sick and also be such a, uh, people pleaser and want to make sure others are happy or, or, or understand. But if I could have told myself or to tell anyone, like, it's, it's not your job right now to make anyone comfortable in this. It, it's your job to heal. That is your job. You know, um, if you're unavailable, whatever that means to you, be unavailable. Um, rest, rest is productive. It's not a setback, it's something you need. You know, taking care of yourself right now, it just, it's not selfish. It's like, it's really necessary. Thank you for that. And rest is something that uh, we take for granted on this very busy go-go society. You know, we're either working, you know, trying to please other people. We're on our phones dealing with social media. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I personally, I personally am a little bit more introverted than probably people would expect because of the public, uh, you know, arena that I have to toggle to, you know, share, share the message with, but um, you know, it's uh, for me, I've dealt with, you know, that, that pleasing people sentiment. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's, I think it's okay to, to know that, you know, A, you, you won't please everybody in life and that's okay, you know, making peace with that. Mm -hmm. And B, you know, you have to, in, in order to, if you really want to please other people, you first have to please yourself. And so it's okay to put yourself first, especially when you're, you know, going through this healing journey. And you, you almost need to, if you really ever want to get back to a position where, you know, you, you can enjoy the company of others. Right. So yes. yeah. I think that it's important. I think that's an important message to share, you know, and I know it's not easy, right. Because we have kind of grown into this new societal world where, um, you know, we tend to worry about what other people think about us, but I think it's really important to, to improve the outer projections of ourselves. We have to work on the inner projections and, that means healing and taking the time. And, you know, I think letting people know that, Hey, I am, uh, I'm unavailable right now. You know, I, I need to work on some things myself. I think that's okay. You know, and I think right. we need to, I'm we, still I, learning. I, I love that, you know, and, um, I I'm, I'm still learning as well. I'm a work in progress and I'm okay with that. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's very interesting to, to unpack, you know, and I, I hope that uh, it was okay with, with our conversation today. And I hope, Absolutely. you know, as this is, this can be tough, especially when you're still going through it. So I really appreciate you being vulnerable today and, and sharing with us. And I know, um, you know, it's, it can be uncomfortable kind of rehashing some of this stuff out, but um, I really appreciate you, you know, it, it feels, doing that. it really feels good if anything, and to know good. who's on the other other and listening, you know, um, 
I, I really actually appreciate this. I think a lot of things have even surfaced just to this day. So this Good. Good. really means a lot to me. Good. Well, I'm glad. I, I want to ask you um, if, if, if it's okay, if anyone sure. wanted to connect with you, because we have a community here of people that, you know, really understand and care about what yeah. you're going through and, and are going through similar challenges. Is there any mm -hmm. platform that, that you want to share such as Instagram or Facebook or anything like that? If, if people want to reach out to you and connect with you. Absolutely. And yeah, I have, I mean, I have a Facebook and an Instagram. I'm happy to give both. Um, I, I would love to connect with other people. Um, I wasn't in the position to do so at first in a weird way. And it's, and it's only good uh, to find others that understand or if I can help anyone in this journey whatsoever. So I guess just give usernames. I'm thinking, oh, I'm thinking of. Um, my Facebook would just be Sarah, S-A-R-A-H, Tate, T-A-T-E. And then Instagram is Sarah T, and then the number eight. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, if you're listening and, uh, sorry, Siri decided to pop up real quick. <laughs> if you're listening and uh, you want to connect with Sarah, please do so. Um, you know, I think that, it, you know, community is something we've been missing over the past few years. And um, we need a community, especially of people that have gone through similar challenges, understand what we're going through. Um, I think it's really important. So, you know, if you're, if you're going through similar challenges and, and need, need support from Sarah, I think she'd be happy to give it. And conversely, um, you know, provide support to one another. And that's what a community does. Back in the day when we had legitimate villages, we used to, you know, come together and help one another and Right. share tasks. Some people would hunt, some people would gather, right? And, um, you know, we've, we've really lost sight of community over the past few decades, uh, certainly more recently with the pandemic. So it's nice, even through online, just having a community to support one another is important. So thank Absolutely. you, Sarah. Is there, um, is there any other last pieces of advice that you would want to give to others uh, going through similar challenges that you think would be valuable? Um, it's, it's actually quite difficult for me to not bring up faith. I know that doesn't resonate with maybe everyone, but this is a time where if you're looking for faith um, to dive right into that, however scary it might feel. Um, prayer, faith, truth, these are things that are why I'm still here. And if you can find that anywhere, that you need to go get it. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. Faith, faith, having faith, not losing hope. These are, these are things that keep us all yeah. going. You know, it's important to have faith and hope, you know, and um, Absolutely. you got to find it within, right? Sometimes you just have to practice it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Well, well, Sarah, I'm, I'm glad that you found faith and hope, you know, I'm glad that you're here. Um, and I want, I want you to know that, um, anything that I can do to help support you on this journey, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, I am sure that others listening will reach out as well, um, you know, and, and welcome you with open arms to the community and any support that you need, you should have it and, uh, don't lose hope. I know this is a tough journey. You know, I know you're still going through it. Remember what I said about, you know, finding the small wins, Mm -hmm. along the way and finding comfort in that. And, um, you know, I know it doesn't make things easier, but the perspective is so important, right? The, the perspective is. that you have is so vital and that faith and that hope is so vital and the perspective can help with that faith and, and hope, right. um, you know, and, and I just really appreciate you taking the time, um, you know, and sharing your vulnerability and, you know, we're, we're all moving in the right direction towards helping one another and, and trying to get to the root cause faster. 
and yes. arming people with the knowledge that they need, um, you know, and so I hope that um, I hope that anybody listening finds the support that they need in this conversation. And Sarah, mm -hmm. thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Sarah. And uh, for those listening, please reach out to Sarah, connect with Sarah. Yes. Thank you so much, guys. I'm here. Thanks for another amazing episode of Mall Talks. Thank you.